Amy Tan was born in Oakland, California in 1952 to Chinese immigrant parents. Her father was an engineer in Beijing who later became a Baptist minister, while her mother came from a wealthy Shanghai family and had escaped an unhappy first marriage which had been arranged. Sadly, Tan's brother and father both died of brain cancer within six months of each other when she was a teenager, and so she and her mother moved to Europe for a while before later returning to California. In college, Tan defied her mother by abandoning the pre-med courses her mother had urged her to take to pursue the study of English and linguistics. She eventually received her bachelor's and master's degrees in these fields at San Jose State University. Tan once remarked in an interview that at an early, early age she tried to distance herself from her Chinese background. However, writing fiction helped her to discover, quote, how very Chinese I was and how much I had stayed, how much it stayed with me that I had tried to deny. Looking back, she remains grateful for her mother's influence. As she said in one interview, quote, My books have amounted to taking her stories, a gift to me, and giving them back to her. To me, it was the ultimate thing I ever could have done for myself and for my mother. Her first novel, The Joy Luck Club, published in 1989, was a huge bestseller. It explores the generational and cultural differences between a young woman and her late Chinese mother's three Chinese friends. The novel was highly acclaimed and spent nine months on the New York Times bestseller list before being turned into a, a successful Hollywood film. Tan's second novel, The Kitchen God's Wife, tells the story of a young woman in California who gains a greater understanding of her mother's Chinese background, and it too was also highly praised by critics. Amy Tan's third novel, The Hundred Secret Senses, shifts focus from mother-daughter relationships to the bond between half-sisters Olivia and Quan. Olivia is a pragmatic yuppie while Quan, her older Chinese half-sister, believes she can speak with spirits. Olivia is embarrassed by Quan's beliefs and is actually becomes rude to her. However, Quan remains devoted to Olivia and takes her to China to try to awaken in her sister the spirit world and their past life together. Amy Tan's next novel, The Bonesetter's Daughter, which was published in 2001, was inspired by her mother's battle with Alzheimer's disease, and she eventually passed away from that in 1999. The novel tells the story of a mother and daughter who work together to recover family history. Amy Tan's 2013 novel, The Valley of Amazement, is an epic saga set during China's last imperial dynasty and the rise of the Republic of China. The novel focuses on the sex trade and culture in Shanghai's international settlement and the struggles and sur of identity and survival faced by the characters, in particular two women forced into the life of courtesans. Although Tan remains popular with literary critics and readers alike, she's also weathered some criticism about her depiction of Chinese-American culture. Cynthia Wong, a professor at the University of California, Berkeley, has criticized Tan's novels, claiming they are, quote, often products of the American-born writer's own heavily mediated understanding of things Chinese, end quote and are popular among Western consumers precisely because they find her work comforting in his, its reproduction of stereotypical images. However, Tan herself has responded to these criticisms by stating that her works are not meant to represent the general experience of Chinese or Asian Americans, 
they've come down to her through her mother's experience and her mother's friends and her own experiences. The Joy and Luck Club went right to number one on the bestseller list. The Joy and Luck Club was so massive when it came out. Everybody loved it. It had such a huge impact on paving the way for other writers of color. My childhood, with its topsy-turvy emotions, has in fact been a reason to write. Auntie Daisy and Uncle John were two of the founding members of the Joy Luck Club. It was hard to wrap my head around all the different aspects of Auntie Daisy's past. What helped is knowing the story of my grandmother being concubine. I didn't understand until I was an adult what she meant by sacrifices. We had many, many arguments. But I came home one day and she was raging. And she pushed me and her eyes were glazed. In a way, they were gone. She was not a tiger mom. She was a suicidal mother. I think it was just an urge she would never be able to get rid of. There you are, puffing away. Oh. <laughs> it was part of my decision to not be like her at all. Amy really started writing as a mental health break from all of the business work that she was doing. I started to ask her about her life. I would listen to everything. She loved the idea she was helping me to write. Yeah. Who are the characters in Amy's work? Her family and people who really have gone through hell and somehow have come out of it. I am not the subject matter of mothers and daughters or in Chinese culture. I am a writer compelled by a subconscious neediness to know, which is a perpetual state of uncertainty and a tether to the past. Thank you.